Hey, what's going on, YouTube and AMC family? All right, I brought you this page, Fintel's front page for their short squeeze screener and leaderboard or whatever. Um, basically because I keep seeing those articles pop up on like securities like AMC and other plays, uh, especially AMC. There was an article that came out yesterday. It said uh, five top short squeezes for the coming week. Da -da -da, and it listed these top five. So if you, whatever you, there's a link to it, even you, it'll bring you here. And I just want people to be careful and realize those numbers, those articles are meant to bait you. And these stocks and the numbers that they show to bait you are both are, are BS. Okay. Um, and here's why. And I just, just be careful guys, when you do this, I mean, they'll fluff, they'll show the f most fluffed number and they won't give you any other information directly to counter it. They'll just leave it out so that they can beat you. Um, but if you, if you actually look into the stock or look into the situation, um, you find out it's, it's usually not the case. And with these top four, it's definitely not the case. Um, in that article, it fluffs them up and says, Oh, they're going to basically they're going to squeeze as we eat, which they're not, <clears throat> they're not, I'll bet. Um, you know, I'm getting out of that hand. Um, and, you know, so, some of these plays you can make a little bit of money on because they generally do go up a little bit, sometimes a decent amount. But if you do get into any of them that they ever list like that, just be very careful and pretty much know not to stay in expecting a squeeze. Expect a run up, maybe a little run up or something, and get out. Don't stay in still thinking, believing it's going to squeeze because then you're going to be left bag holding. And that's what they're counting on. Um, but anyway, like the numbers that they show in fluff is like the 73% short interest of float for SPRT. That number fluffed. And I'll show you why. And it's probably not even slightly correct now, even more even. Um, and then TKRT, the borrow fee rate is and so on so you know they list whatever <clears throat> number they can find that's the most eye-catching for that um specific specific stock um just to bait you especially those ones that say short squeeze plays i mean i wouldn't play any of these as a short it definitely is a short squeeze play so i'm going to show you up a graph that i made explaining ones that i believe are real ones and these fake ones and the numbers in life. When you actually look into the securities, you'll see that they're not what they seem to be, not what they portray it to be. Because um, they're just trying to manipulate you away from these kind, the real ones, and into the fake ones. Okay, so in this graph I made, um, it says real short squeeze potential versus pump and dumps made to look like easy short squeeze plays. You know, you think, oh yeah, it's easy, easy, especially with 73% short, uh, interest to float. Yeah, that's what they want you to think. Um, but if you, you know, go into the security and, and do your own research on anything you invest in, um, because you'll find that a lot of articles that they pop up and fluff like that are not the case. Um, and especially with these top four, I mean, these top four. Okay. This is exactly why. Okay. Here's the ranking on uh, Fintel's sh uh, short squeeze rank. This one just to the left here. You got uh, SPRT one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. AMC is listed at 216th. SENS, -E -S, which I believe is also a short squeeze play, is 290. And then SDC is 79 and RRC is 708. And all these being that far down, I believe is ridiculous. Um, in reality, because oh, well, I'll just look look at what it says above. I mean, fake, you got played, they got paid. Real, shorts lose their ass and are forced to cover. That's that's the key there, forced to cover. Short squeeze isn't any play that goes up and, they, and anyone with a short position closes out their positions. I mean, that's not a short squeeze. That's just the market. You know, that's the market. Um, a short squeeze is when you literally squeeze 
the shorts and force them to close their positions at a massive loss. And none of these present those hedge funds or anyone with a massive loss, especially because they already took care of them. I said, okay, and so this next number is short interest to float. Okay, so this is fluffed on the left, and on the right, it's more legit, and I'll tell you why. Okay, on this left, it says 73% of um, the float is, is shorted. Was shorted. Was. Um, what people need to remember, and they said, well, the, the, the most recent um, data just came out, though, so it has to be true. Well, no, the re most recent data came out, but it's still two weeks delayed. It's still the last day that counted on that last uh, report that just came out was um, the 31st of August. Okay, so, it, I mean, so there's two weeks of missing data that would affect these numbers huge. I took just the last 10 days. Not the last two weeks, but just the last 10 trading days. Okay. And you'll see this in a moment. Let's, let's move forward. Uh, borrow fee rate. And another fluff number. Ooh, 163%. Well, they have to pay 163% um, to borrow that. Yeah, it's going to squeeze. No. It's that high, but no one's borrowing because they don't have to. Why do they not have to? Because they got out of their short positions a long time ago. Not a long time ago, but probably within the last 10 days. I mean, probably the first day that it started to run up because they're baiting him. Um, and every single one of these uh, securities, the short positions, the people who own short positions, also have a massive amount of call options because they're baiting you because they want it to go up a little bit so they can make money too. But they start it with their shorts to make these numbers and then pumping up and then they'll close them out and it runs up a little bit and it sort of gets FOMO in and then they cash out with their call options way up there and leave everyone back holding because they're still expecting a squeeze. It's not going to come because they're, 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 using that two week delay to their to their advantage big time um and the reason that i know that these are good actual short squeeze plays and the ones they're trying to distract you from and these ones are not um is because of this number at the very bottom that i figured okay i took the the float okay yeah, i got, got the float whatever the float is and then we have institutional ownership and everyone ignores institutional ownership when it comes to short squeeze plays which is insane to me because I believe it has a lot to do with everything. Um, and this is why, and this, and this is an insider shares. Okay. Institute, this institutional ownership that you can find on, on most um, platforms. When you look up the, the information on a stock, that institutional ownership is not, um, I mean, I mean that institutional ownership is, part of the float. I mean, that takes away from the float. It's not that separate from the float. It Every institutional ownership takes away from the float. So you would float minus institutional ownership. Okay. And that's what I did. Why I did this. Um, cause we, I took all the floats and we have our institutional ownerships and our shares short. Okay. So you, you add the shares short with the institutional ownership, add those together. And that's what you have that's uh, in total was taking away from the, the total float. So then you just see almost as close as possible exactly how many shares are available. Um, and it shows here. Okay. And this one's a little bit up there, but regard, that's, that's besides the point. Um, there's a different one that I have a reasoning for SPRT not being a one, but... Um, and this is the equation. So you do institutional ownership plus short interest equals the percentage of the float. So you do institutional ownership plus the um, short interest, add those together, and then you divide that number by the float, and you get what percentage of the float is taken up by that by that group. Um, and these ones on the left, you know, 
two out of the three, I mean, two out of the four are ridiculous. I mean, only 35%? Really? That means there's might be a crap done. And then same thing with that. So there's there's not like it's you could really even squeeze that. Um and I don't know how in the heck they got these borrow fee rates. And those borrow borrow fee rates, I think they're they're just made up by Fintel, really. Because every other borrow fee rate I find is not even close to these. Um, which is insanely ridiculous to me. Okay. Um, but you go on this right and you see AMC, Sense, SDC, and RRC, especially these last three, is why I believe this equation is important. Look at RRC. Okay, we have the float, 235 million, and you have institutional ownership, 308 million shares. So there's already more shares owned by institutions than there is of the float. And then you add the shares short, 36.1 million, and you have 145% of the float owned by institutional ownership and shorts. So what does that tell you? That tells you that any buying pressure whatsoever should force people out of their positions. I mean, legally, <clears throat> you already know there's synthetics in there. I mean, it's duh. I, but with that, you would think that any any type of buying pressure would force those shorts to, to cover. I mean, they would not have a choice to hold. And not only that, but the big difference between these two sides <clears throat> is the amount of shares shorted people. Okay. I mean, SPRT. Share short, six million. Yeah. I mean that's yeah. I mean that's not horrible for a source to play, but yeah. It, I mean six million share. They're not gonna lose that much sleep over that. I mean they're not gonna go broke. Um. So most likely, and which is what they did, they closed out before they were forced to be closed out because they can afford it because it's not that big of a loss. Um, especially TKAT, come on, 1.6 million shares shorted, and you're going to put it as second of the short squeeze? Any any institution with 1.6 million shares shorted is going to laugh at them trying to be short squeezed. They're just going to go, okay, I'll cash out. I'll, yep, I'll close them. Not a big deal. I'll make it up in an hour. You know, they're not, no one's going to lose sleep over that. So you're never going to squeeze them. They're just going to close out right away, which they did, which they did on all four of these. And this is how I figured, and this is, I mean, blatant evidence that, is, that they did. Okay. Average short volume last, of the, just the last 10 days. Okay. I took the last 10 days, trading days, and I average, I found the average of short volume per day. Okay. Um, so that's how many sh sh uh, short transactions, whether whether closing or opening, um, happen in that one and each day on average. And on BPIG, it was on average the last the last ten days, three hundred ninety five percent of the short interest, which is share short right here. Um, so. Three times the amount of shares short, basically, was the volume in shares in in short volume per day. That means they could have closed every single short position almost four times every single day for the last ten days. Okay, when the volume gets when the short volume gets over the short interest per day. They closed out. That's it. They, they, they closed out. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Um, and it, it, it's ridiculous. And that's with, true with all these. ATER, almost 300% of the share short per day for the last 10 days. Same thing with TKAT, 124% of the short earnings. So almost 
well, like one and a quarter, one point two five basically times, um, every day for the last ten days. Easy, they could have. Did they? Yes, they did. Come on, people. I mean, if the stock was just bleeding red all those ten days, then I'm then I might be saying something different. I mean, maybe. Oh well, no, maybe it wasn't buying pressure because it never went up. But no, during those green days, they were green. They closed, it's people, they closed. Okay, and same thing with SPRT, 153%. So one and a half times every single day for the last 10 days, they, they could have closed every single share out. Because they did. Okay, so these are not short squeeze plays. Not right now, not at all. Not even close. They weren't even to begin with, but at least the shorts did have to cover, but they weren't forced to, so it's not really a squeeze. It was just a volatile stock i guess but um it's ridiculous and these ones are the real plays you know why because 95 million shares shorted would hurt being forced to cover i mean come on that would hurt um so there's a lot more at stake you know they're not just gonna cash out Especially how far off they are. I mean, these ones aren't far off the mark from where they where they started their short positions. I mean, they were maybe ten percent off or something when they closed them. I guarantee you, these ones they're already bell belly up. Um, and proving that they didn't cover is same thing here. The exact opposite to be out of here. You know, here we had they could have closed out a shit ton all the time, many times, and it was green. Here we have the stock was has been all these stocks have been a little bit green, but the the short interest volume the short volume has been crap. It hasn't been nothing because they're not closing. I mean, maybe a couple little guys are or whatever. No, they're just still trying to short a little bit, but there's not much available. And why there's not much available? And they don't say that there is, but there's not because. Of these numbers, 129% of the float has been taken up. 145% of the float has been taken up. 50%, 50%. I mean, 50% is not huge, but it's good. Um, it's, but, you know, real-time investors are a lot heavier than these two. Um, so it's not going to show up in these numbers quite the same. But that float's already gone too. But that's why they're all acting the same. Um, because the shorts don't want to cover because it's going to cost them a fortune. It's not going to cost them a penny like all these ones. These ones they didn't care. They're just that, and they had a shit ton of call options and all those. More call options than they did put options. But opposite of this, this one they had more put options than call options. So these are true short squeeze plays, everybody. Not the other way around. The other way around, they're just. I mean, the other way around, you got played and they got paid. So I hope this helped. Somebody, anybody with a little bit of education on this? Because every time I see these articles come out and people jump into them and people get screwed, it's it's just not right. So anyway, be, be careful, guys, what you guys invest in and watch out for this kind of crap. And Fintel, how dare you? I can't believe they could sleep at night doing that. Anyway, like and subscribe. That's my video. It's my opinion. Later.